Generation Z, people born from the mid-1990s to around 2010, make up a quarter of the U.S. population. And they're growing up in an increasingly cashless society. How does that affect their relationship to money and finance? Economics correspondent Paul Salman took a group of kids on a field trip to find out. It's part of our weekly series, Making Sense. So, is anybody, anybody want some ice cream? <laughs> All right, it's right over here. A chilly day in Manhattan. But for 10 and 11 year olds, there are no unseasonable treats. What's the ice cream in the corner? It's peppermint stick. So it's peppermint, peppermint stick. stick. But the excitement for the grown-ups, myself, and personal finance expert Beth Kobliner, this was a transaction with an unfamiliar twist. This store doesn't take cash, ever. Like a growing number of retail shops, it's plastic or mobile payment only. But cashless was no problem for the kids, who of course weren't paying. Awood, what are you going with? Cookies and cream. Cookies and cream. With right? the sugar. sugar cone. But they're also growing up at a time when only one in three purchases is made with cash. So we wanted to know, does an increasingly cashless economy keep kids from grasping the basics of price and value? How much do you think these things cost? To taste so good, I think it would be like anywhere from three to seven dollars. But the kids say expensive compared to the ice cream truck. It also I had the cone. Charge you two dollars and seventy-five cents. Okay, so they're familiar with relative prices, but can they calibrate value? If I said to you, I'll give you five dollars and fifty cents instead of the ice cream cone, which would you choose, the cone or the money? The money. You would, why? Uh, because I could get something else and I could maybe get a cheaper ice cream. You can get you at least the same thing. amount of, a bigger amount of ice cream for two seventy five at Trader Joe's or three ninety nine at Trader Joe's and then you can have ice cream for a whole week. All right, I know what I'm gonna do. I'll offer uh, $2 who will still give me their ice cream for $2. Uh, what about a dollar? But in the end, two of the kids actually took my low-ball $1 cash offer for half-eaten ice cream, whose allure was apparently melting as fast as the food stuff itself. This suggested not only the economic concept of diminishing returns, but also that hard currency has the same cachet, or more, than it did when Beth Kobliner and I were first lured into the sugar market. When I was a little kid, about 10, 11, yeah. I remember going to the ice cream store and my dad would give me a dollar and ice cream then was 50 cents and the sprinkles were five cents. In but my I, day, a quarter, by <laughs> the way. The ice cream cone was a quarter. And I would get change. And the whole transaction was really about learning addition, subtraction, numeracy. Today, 70% of all our purchases are done online or with cards. How many of you have smartphones? Every one of you. Now about half of 10 to 12 year olds have smartphones and 40% of teenagers have debit cards. So is cash arithmetic a lost art? How many quarters in $3? Uh, three dollars? Twelve. Twelve. How many quarters in three dollars and 75 cents? Fifteen. Fifteen. Very good. So kids can still count without burning too much cash. But aren't they being suckered into spending by switching to a credit card? I don't think I will be responsible with one because I just want to go around spending, spending, and then all your, all your money is wasted on yeah, stupid um, stuff sometimes. Isaac Smith Lewis's reluctance was echoed by the others. I'm going to be going on like shopping sprees and be like, okay, everything's <laughs> on me. I can't use credit cards because then I'll be like, oh, I'll buy that, I'm going to buy that, I'm going to buy that. Money is a growth of trees. When it comes to credit cards, in fact, Gen Zers may be more penny-wise than their parents. Dawood's mom, Huda Katabi, for example. Credit cards, especially me, I just swipe, 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 and then at the end of the week it's like five, six hundred dollars, and I don't know what I did with it. <laughs> really? Personally. So you're as bad as they are. <laughs> I'm worse. <laughs> so are these Gen Zers safe with their or their parents' money? No. Take it one further remove, and to tech-savvy marketers, they're sitting ducks. That's because kids this age spend about six hours a day online on average, much of it playing video games and spending on them. The industry's new business model, selling items within the game. Like the outfits the characters wear, also known as skins, in the game sensation Fortnite. In-game purchases, I feel like 
it's just like click click it's just not real money beside the game it just feels like you're using like game money these kids aren't alone Facebook came under scrutiny earlier this year when documents revealed it made more than $34 million from in-app purchases made by minors. And as Alice Richelson told us, these aren't always one-time charges. I got a subscription on a coloring app and it just like kept taking money from every month. Oh, yeah. And um, oh, finally my dad found out and I got in trouble. Yeah, she somehow signed up on iTunes for a bunch of some games that kept charging over every month. And I didn't get the receipts. They went to her email, but I changed that now, and uh, so I didn't know what was happening. So I shut that off, yeah. But when it comes to other in-game purchases, Jason Richelson said... I give in sometimes. Why do you give in? Because they keep bothering me. <laughs> Impulsive kids, pestered parents, all overmatched by online credit, cash-free, card free. And that's why the actual way we finally purchased our ice cream gave me pause. You don't accept cash? No, you not, sir. Card or Apple Pay? Well, Apple Pay I don't have. A, car, a card? I could do it. I have what? Apple Pay. Kobliner uses mobile pay apps, but she does have concerns about them. There's a study that looked at mobile pay and it turns out when you use your phone to buy things mm -hmm. you are more likely to feel that you got a good deal at that store because it's like that magic wand you're getting something for nothing you're not giving up dollars really yeah so stores really have an incentive to not let us use cash even friendly cash-free stores like this one as if the magic spell of ice cream wasn't troublesome enough for the PBS NewsHour, economics correspondent Paul Salmon reporting from Manhattan's Lower East Side.